Hey there, art nerds. It's been a while since we've taken a look at alcohol markers, and in that time, Arteza has finally released a brush tip for their Everblend markers. So I guess that means I'm finally reviewing their Everblend markers for you guys. Initially, I had wanted to review their Everblend brush tip markers as well as one set of their Everblend chisel and bullet tip markers, but I'm still waiting on those chisel and bullet tip markers to arrive. And rather than make you guys wait, I wanted to go ahead and get this review out before the holidays in case you were thinking about giving or asking for these markers. So I purchased both of these sets on the Arteza website. I bought this one on Black Friday and this one on Cyber Monday. I absolutely did not pay full price. And I want you guys to be sure to check the description below for my show notes where I'll have links to everything, prices for everything, and my thoughts written out for you guys. You know, for my friends who are interested but don't necessarily follow along with video and audio so well. I'm one of y'all. No judgment here. I prefer written reviews and tutorials myself. So that's why I have that down for you guys down in the show notes. So we're taking a look today at the Arteza Flora Tones. This is the 36 marker set. They have a medium chisel nib, a brush nib, and they feature replaceable nibs. See, brush nibs. And this is a, a hefty box. And I think I paid around 33 for this, but I'll get back to you guys with a price. And this is also one of those boxes that can convert to an easel. And I really like that kind of attention to detail because it means you can use the box itself for much longer. So Floritones Blendable Alcohol-Based Ink, double-sided, non-toxic. And then they have some helpful tips for my alcohol marker friends out there. Speaking of, if you are looking for alcohol marker reviews, tips, tricks, and tutorials, I have you guys covered. That'll be down in the description below, but I've got some great playlists for those of you who are interested in learning how to use alcohol markers. Arteza says that they are an American company, but pretty much everything they put out is manufactured in China. And then on the top of this sturdy cardboard box, we have our 36 colors with representative triangles. So in this set, we have star yellow, lime pulp yellow, citrine yellow, cheddar orange, porcelain peach, poppy red, burgundy, dahlia pink, blush pink, deep pink, Parisian purple, genie blue, maya blue, whale blue, pastel blue, wave blue, surf blue, Caribbean blue, jungle green, pastel green, cucumber green, micro green, pear green, olive green, grape green, green tea, cilantro green, brick red, sandstone orange, bisque, teak brown, hazelnut brown, warm gray, warm gray, warm gray, warm gray. And I think they have four of these 36 color sets available, but I'll have that information for you guys officially in just a second. I went with this set because frankly, it seemed like it had the most usable to me and what I like to draw colors. I also decided to augment that set with the 12 Everblend art markers. This is in the pastel tones. And these also have brush nibs. So this is sapphire yellow, white quartz, cream pearl, apricot, peony pink, ballerina pink, periwinkle, sweet pea purple, baby blue, pale aqua blue, pomelo green, and mantis green. Honestly, y'all, it's pretty good that I hadn't done too much research onto these, or I didn't really remember any of the research that I'd done on these uh, when I started this video, because the more I researched, the more slightly annoyed I started to get, and the more I started to have, I, I have this feeling of foreboding, but let's talk about that while I unbox these. So both of these are shrink wrapped and in uh, cardboard containers. Arteza also sells acrylic markers, chalk, ma chalk markers, dry erase markers, the tri markers that I reviewed for you guys a couple years ago and absolutely hated, highlighters, permanent markers, paint markers, and their real brush pins, which are very, very similar to the clean color real brush pins or the Acacia Psy brush pins. 
So the brush nib markers seem to come in black marker bodies and the bullet nibs come in white marker bodies. And I should have received my bullet nib pack already. It said they ship, but uh, <laughs> I have no idea where they are. So they come in sets of 120, 60, 36, and 12, and refills come in packs of four of the same color. And the prices on their site are all over the place. It's no wonder I couldn't remember an exact price for you guys because they are seriously just all over the place. The site is claiming that this 12 pack of brush tip pastel colors is $51.16. And I paid less than $13.99 for these because I had a code that discoded counts my total. But some of their other 12 packs are around $23.99 on the Arteza site. And there doesn't really seem to be any rhyme or reason for that pricing because this is a new product and we're past Black Friday and Cyber Monday. For the Flora Tone set, I paid $33.99 on the Arteza site and they're currently going for $89.13. <laughs> which I think is pretty dang I don't know man I I, I figure these are gonna compete with like the Artify and the Ohuhu markers and those are still currently packed up so what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm actually going to when I do the marker comparison I'm gonna insert some clips from those reviews just so you guys know what those markers look like since I can't pull them out now the prices are better on Amazon with the big 36 color sets going up to $64.99. So the pastel tone set is $18.99 on Amazon and the flora tone set is $40.99 on Amazon. And I really just feel like Arteza is kinda all over the place with these, especially in terms of pricing. So the website itself says, the new Everblend Ultra Art markers are improved in every way from their rounded triangular body and cone sloped nib holder, ensuring your markers always stay comfortably in hand to its advanced high quality alcohol based ink providing more vibrant coverage as a result your marker drawing sketches and illustrations are more enjoyable because blending layering and transitioning challenges are eased these refillable dual tip premium art markers are fit with both a medium chisel tip and a rubber brush tip so those of you who've watched my marker reviews know that's actually hugely important to me for variety and sustainability, replacement nibs are, and marker tweezers Replacement nibs and marker tweezers can be purchased separately. So although these are refillable, Arteza doesn't sell the refill inks and all the replacement nibs seem to be in chisel tip, not in brush. Arteza, what are you doing? This seems like it could be a good product. Why are you not supporting this product as is? Why are your prices wildly inconsistent? Why don't you offer replacement brush tips as well? Because those do wear out. Why don't you carry your own ink? What gives? So I'm hoping I really like these markers. I try not to buy art supplies I think I'm going to dislike, and it would be great if I could recommend these to you guys. However, before we even dive into this, I, I, wanna, have a, I wanna have a word with Arteza. Okay, Arteza, are you listening? Probably not, but that's fine. So look, you gotta get your prices consistent. Honestly, $51 for a pack of 12 markers is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Your prices between your site and the Amazon listing should be fairly comparable. There shouldn't be like a $20 difference between the two. Also, if you're gonna promote your markers as having replaceable nibs and being refillable, you need to carry those products. Otherwise, it's not really such a feature. And these brush nibs, the rubber, foam rubber brush nibs, they do last a lot longer than their horrible, mushy, garbage fiber counterparts. So big props to you for going for the foam rubber. That's a huge plus in my book, but they do wear out over time, especially if you can't refill your markers. So please, please, please consider carrying the matching color coordinated inks as well as replacement foam brush nibs. Please, if you're gonna do this, please, please do. Because otherwise, people like me who are very familiar with alcohol markers are just gonna eat you alive. And it seems, having not unboxed these yet, it seems like these could be a really promising product.
So now that I've had a private little word with Arteza, let's go ahead and finish unpacking these. We'll start with the 12 color set. And it's got a little tape bit at the top. That's not really a big deal. And inside our markers are just kind of crammed in, which frankly for a small set, like a 12 color set, this is fine. The box is sturdy enough that we could reuse the box. So they do indeed have a triangular body. It's a little bit bulky in the hand. It's definitely bigger and we'll, I'll do a comparison for you guys in a minute, but it is definitely bigger than Copic Sketches, Copic Chows, the Blick Studio brushes or Prismacolor markers. It's probably around the same size, but a little more uncomfortable than the Ohuhu markers or the Sketch markers or the Artify markers. So the brush end is des designated with a gray color on the front there is a colored chip with an approximation of the color don't don't rely on the color chips for any brand even copic because there are going to be differences rely on your swatches with the color family so y15 and that sapphire yellow same thing on the other side the front has screening on it that reads arteza everblend art marker brush and medium i do like that we have our color name, our color number, alcohol dye ink. This stuff, if you get it on fabric, it's basically permanent. So be careful about that. Non-toxic, American company designed in the USA. It also says this product plants trees. I'd like to see something to back that up. Now down here, it says PRC. That stands for People's Republic of China. So if you're new here, if you're not familiar with my Arteza reviews, Arteza doesn't really make their own stuff. They white label it or they work with other companies, typically companies in China to produce their products, which isn't always a bad thing, but it often means you can't get the refills because they don't even know what those colors would be. And one of the reasons I really specifically, yes, you could refill these probably with Copic ink or Blick Studio ink, but that would require a lot of guesswork and color matching. If Arteza would release their relabeled colored inks we could match them up ourselves and it'd be much easier. And this would make this product a lot easier to use in the long term. So man, me and Arteza, like I, I like, I like some of their ideas. I don't want to just hate on them, but then some of the choices that they make and how they do or do not support their own products. I just, as an art supply reviewer and an artist and somebody who loves alcohol markers, I can't quite wrap my head around it. It just feels like a one cheek sneak, it, it feels like they're just doing it half heartedly and not really giving it the full gusto. So that is the 12 color pack. You could choose to keep the box. You could choose to possibly recycle the box if you have that in your area. It is a choking hazard, small parts, not for children under three. Another, another moment of real talk here. Alcohol markers tend to be very fumey. So if you have like a smell sensitivity, if you're prone to migraines, if you're working in a small, not well ventilated area, alcohol markers are probably not a good fit for you. I also would not necessarily recommend alcohol markers for small children. I'm, I'm talking like kids under 10, certainly not under 10 without supervision. These are, they're great, they're wonderful, they're not really a toy. They're not gonna come out of your clothes if you get them all over your clothes. If you pop a marker in your mouth, it's not, they're not Crayolas. I know some of y'all are like rolling your eyes. You're like, why is she being so condescending? That's not my point. That's not my intention at all. But I, would, I wouldn't say not for children under three. I would say not for children under 10. I mean, of course, you've got some kids who are more mature than others who are going to take it a little bit more seriously and, you know, obviously use your discretion. So for some reason, there is a hole in the bottom of the box, almost like it could go on a tripod. I don't think that's the case. This already reminds me of the box that the Color It markers came in and I really like that box. I thought that was really cool. I've rehomed a lot of my alcohol marker collection to people who can use it rather than having this dragon horde of alcohol markers. So I don't have that anymore, but I did like their box. Okay, so this is meant to fold back it looks like and slide behind. 
so that's glued. I'll, I'll mess with that a little bit later. It does make it hard to get it all the way open. So inside we have the 36 pack, I will say, has a much nicer display than the 12 pack. And, and frankly, isn't really that much more expensive, especially on Amazon. So these are all shrink wrapped, but they are in a case that's designed to be reused for a long period of time. I love that. So I want to find a way to display these. I might have to mess with this off camera and see if I can figure it out for y'all and uh, figure out that cool easel mechanism. But I like the design of the box so far. Uh, the markers, that's gonna, that's gonna be something in and of itself. Hey Joseph. Yeah. Can you see if you can figure this box out? So it's supposed to convert into an easel and they have instructions down here and I just, I don't know, I feel like I'm missing something. I wouldn't call this an instruction. Uh, a pictograph. Yeah. So it's literally just saying to hold this. Oh. Yeah. It's very rigid. Yeah. I mean, I can bend it back as far as it wants, but I don't know if yeah. that's I wise. Do you want yeah. me to? No. Okay. I'm just gonna... I'm actually going to use they, they this. They may have meant to perforate it on both sides. They might have. They it feels like it's missing it a step. That or they just bound it too tight. At first I thought it was supposed to slip off some, but it doesn't. And this is, this is glued. It's just the seam is yeah. supposed to fold back. And... Okay. All right. Well, you guys saw it. Two people tried to figure that out and we could not. We couldn't get this to convert into an easel. That doesn't mean y'all can't, but if you're also having trouble, it also doesn't mean y'all are stupid. I feel like something, something's up there with the user interface, Arteza. So these, this whole thing apparently comes out. Is that the step I'm missing? Is that what I'm, like it doesn't really want to do it the way they want it to do it. Okay. All right, fine. So this, is also one single unit. Everything has its own nice little slot. I will give this to Arteza. I like their branding a lot. I think it's very slick looking branding. I like the red and black. It's pretty minimal. If they stick around long term, it's something that could become kind of iconic. So I definitely will give them props for having some slick packaging. Even their sketchbooks have the red spiral binding. And I don't know, I'm just like a sucker for that. It looks good. I am, however, I'm just gonna like put the box to the side and focus on this. So for my friends who are totally new to alcohol markers, I do want to give you guys a piece of advice. Store your alcohol markers horizontally, especially if it's for long term storage, so that the ink can reach both nibs and one nib doesn't end up drying out and dying prematurely. So this isn't going to be my most conclusive, my most definitive alcohol marker comparison ever because most of my reference markers are packed away but I do have at least a very small smattering of a sampling. I think it, it kind of indicates most some of the market what I consider to be the big players in the market. Now, of course, missing are the Artify and the Ohuhu and the sketch markers. But like I said, I'll put in a clip of those from their review just so you guys kind of get an idea of how this marker would compare to those. Because frankly, I do think like the Ohuhu and the Shuttle Art and the Art and Fly and the Artify markers are the closest competition for the Arteza Everblend. Right here, right now, the Everblend is the longest marker in the lineup, just slightly longer than the Prismacolor markers, quite a bit longer than the Blick Studio and the Copic Sketch markers. All of these are double-sided alcohol markers. The only one that is not refillable is the Prismacolor, and all of them have replaceable brush nibs. Copic offers replaceable brushes and replaceable chisels, as well as a variety of other brushes. I think Blick just offers replacements for the chisels and the brushes. These also offer refills. You can go to dickblick.com and order the matching color corresponding alcohol ink refills so you can refill your markers without the guesswork. Copic offers refills. Prismacolor does not. 
Currently, Arteza does not. These are not too difficult to remove. They are a little bit slippery, so if you have grip issues like I do, if you have um, arthritis issues, it's gonna be a little bit harder to uncap these. So if you're someone who likes alcohol markers for coloring for relaxation, they may not be the best fit. Now, something Arteza could do to make these easier to use is just a little bit of textured nubbins on the cap. Even just a matte finish on the cap would make it a little bit easier to grab. Now, I do find uncapping my Copic markers can be equally difficult sometimes, so Arteza is not alone in this being a problem. And I also want to point out for some of my younger viewers, I got early onset arthritis when I was around 25, just from not really taking good care of my hands and drawing for, you know, 14 hours a day and not taking breaks, that sort of thing. So I mention this because you can do it to yourself. I hope you don't. I hope you learn from my, my mistakes. But, you know, arthritis is not just an older person issue. It can affect people of a variety of ages. All right, so these two markers down here, I scavenged them out of this, my it needs to be refilled box. So these, these are running kind of dry, but I think the Arteza's brush length is pretty comparable to the Copic and the Blick, a little bit shorter than the Prismacolor. And the chisel actually looks surprisingly similar as well. So far, none of these markers are particularly fumey, but I am working in a well-ventilated area with lots of open doors. So I am trying to take proper precautions, even though these are open. And I know having all these markers open while I'm talking makes people nervous. I do this for you guys, the viewers, so you don't have to. I'm doing this to help you guys out so that you guys get a good visual comparison of the markers and it allows you to make an informed decision. So here are the tops. So color number, PB might be purple blue, and then 16. And you know, it doesn't seem like they have a color chart available. I'll try to dig around for them, but generally the numbers actually signify something. It signifies, I think, the saturation and the shade or tone of the marker. Then we have our PB 134. We have our Copic Chow that doesn't have anything on the top. The whole top of a Copic Chow is color indicative but it does have the color number screened in really large letters on the side. The Blick has it on the top and the Copic has the top and then really small on the side. And you wanna hear that satisfying click that lets you know your markers have been shut. I do think the plastic for the Arteza feels a little bit cheaper than I would have hoped. But again, I do like that not only is the color info on the cap, but the color info is on the marker itself. That's actually pretty handy. Here's some shots from the Ohuhu markers that I reviewed a while back. These are round bodied markers. You can see this body type on a bunch of different markers and I've reviewed several of them. I believe the Ohuhu markers do have a fiber brush nib, but at the price point they come at, it's kind of hard to resist and it makes them an easy marker to recommend for people who are interested in getting started with alcohol markers because they're priced cheaper than most of the other, even the fiber brush nibs, most of the other alcohol markers on the market. Now, Artifly did release a very competitive alcohol marker that might be a little bit better than the Ohuhu markers, but these are the markers that I'm talking about when I'm comparing the Arteza alcohol markers against other markers. I'm comparing them against the sort of commonly found on Amazon, very cheap alcohol markers. So here's some shots from the field test for the Ohuhu markers, just to give you guys an idea of how they handle. I have both the unbox and swatch and the alcohol marker field test available for you guys here on YouTube. I'll be sure to link those as well as other kind of comparative and competitive alcohol markers. Because these have a kind of mushy fiber tip, they are really, really prone to bleeding out and kind of over blending, but that doesn't make them the worst marker. I would just recommend that you work larger than I'm working here and you keep that in mind. Another problem with the fiber brush tips is that they are very prone to fray 
crying to getting mushy and this is a problem because you lose your flexibility and you also lose your ability to go in and do really fine lines and details. These did come with a blender marker however and I was pretty satisfied with the color selection. These markers were purchased out of pocket by me using funds from my Patreon. I have no sort of affiliation or relationship with Ohuhu and all opinions are my own. So here are the sketch markers, which I liked a whole lot better. I really felt like these could be a good competition for Copic. I got these from, or I purchased these from Marker Universe. And my only complaint about these markers really is that here in the US, they're really kind of expensive for what they are. So they're smaller bodied alcohol markers. They have a foam rubber brush nib, so they're very flexible. And I like that they have a smaller marker body because it's a lot easier on my hand and it's a lot easier on my arthritis. The marker body itself is kind of smooth, very similar to the Ohuhu markers in that regard. So if you have grip issues, it can be difficult to uncap the markers. So here's a marker lineup of several of the alcohol markers that I've reviewed here on the channel, just to kind of give you guys an idea. And I have, I will have these linked down in the description below if you want to check them out. I got the pastel set and a few additional colors. The pastel set came with a marker wallet, which is pretty handy but there's no room for those additional markers that I had purchased open stock. So here's some shots from the sketch marker field test. I was really impressed by how well these blend. This set did not come with their own colorless blender, so I'm using a Copic colorless blender for this. And that's gonna be pretty similar to what I'm gonna use with the Arteza markers anyway, so it gives you guys a pretty good idea. I actually think the pastel set is very similar to the pastel set that I purchased from Arteza. So that's why I chose to include it. It's a very apt comparison, except for the price point, since the sketch markers are fairly expensive and price prohibitive. I found these markers a joy to color with. The foam rubber brush tip is very easy to use and allows me to get really large lines and really thin lines, which allows for really expressive markering. And it also makes them a lot easier to color with than say bullet tip markers, which all that repetitive coloring strain is really hard on my arthritis. So that's one of the reasons I recommend, you know, the soft brush tip markers so frequently. I had a lot of fun playing around with these markers like the Ohuhu markers, these were purchased out of pocket for the purposes of review using funds from my Patreon. And then finally, we have the Artify markers. Now, these were actually sent to me by Artify for the purposes of reviewing with the stipulation that I would give a fair and honest and as unbiased as possible review. So these are pretty similar to the Ohuhu markers in terms of how they handle. That triangular body looks pretty dang familiar and they don't have the marker name on the cap, but they do have the marker number. Now, one of the things I really liked about these RD5 markers is the fact that their cap actually can turn into an easel, which makes storage portability and usability really pretty simple. And that's something I tried to showcase throughout the review is that I can actually keep them in the easel and utilize the easel the whole time. Unlike with those Arteza markers that I couldn't even figure out how to get the larger container to turn into an easel. They did come with their own blending marker, so I'm demonstrating that here, but they also work well with other alcohol markers. That's something I always test for when I'm reviewing alcohol markers is how well they play together with other markers on the market because I don't know about you guys, but I don't just use one brand when I'm using my markers. I'm usually using several brands together to get the colors and the price point that I want.
So here's some shots from the RD5 field test and I wanted to try rendering somebody with a darker skin tone. So I have a monarch butterfly queen here to go with the dragonfly queen that I rendered a few years ago. I believe these markers have a fiber brush nib. That's what it looks like here. I'd have to dig them up. We recently moved and I honestly have no idea where I hid these, but I believe they have a fiber nib, which does make them a little bit more challenging to color with as they're much more prone to bleeding than if they had a foam rubber nib like the Arteza alcohol markers have. And I also found that the color range wasn't quite what I hoped. I did get the smaller color range. So, um, you know, that's on me. Artify does offer larger color ranges. They do offer more color options. So I could have ordered more open stock and utilized that. And I was also trying to do some somewhat challenging things, but I found that there were kind of a lot of gaps in their color gamut, which made it a little bit more difficult for me to color what I had in mind. Generally, I praise alcohol marker companies when they opt to include several grays because grays can really extend your color co collection. But in this instance, I found them a little bit more challenging to color with. I'm gonna swatch the two marker sets individually so that you guys get a good idea of what comes in each set. I am swatching on, I think this is number six. The rest of them are all packed up, otherwise I'd show them off to you. But I always do my marker swatching in a Strathmore mixed media sketchbook and frequently I do my field test in this as well, unless the markers are really promising and then I decide I'm gonna make something really cool and then I'll usually work on like Strathmore Bristol or something like that. But generally I disclose that when I'm doing the field test. So here is an example illustration. So this was done with a bunch of different alcohol markers purchased from five below. Not all of them turn out that good though. I mean, sometimes you're just having a real bad day and it turns out like this. This was done with really, really cheap water-based markers and there was just no way I could salvage it. But generally it looks something like this where I do my swatches and then I also label them by either color name or color family. So this would be the chisel tip and this would be the brush tip and this was from the Artify review. So I will link that for you guys since in my head, I am going to be comparing these Arteza markers against the Artify, the Shuttle Art, the Art and Fly, all of those from Amazon white labeled alcohol marker companies. I'm gonna start off by swatching the 12 colors in our pastel tones set. I'm gonna do the first one, you know, narrating it for you guys so we guys so we can get a feel for how these markers actually feel. They do feel kind of big and kind of slick in the hand. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to do one pass of the chisel and one pass of the brush. And brush feels pretty stiff. And that should give us a pretty good idea of how these swatch. It's not gonna give us a good idea of how these handle because really the field test is where we're gonna figure that out. But you know, so uh, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't, I am having that kind of a night. So we're going to go ahead and do our narrated test. So that's the chisel nib. It does seem to be a little bit more bleedy. This nib is, frankly, I tried to get three strokes out of it. I think it's really just capable of two widths. And then the brush, a little bit gummy, a little rubbery, but not too bad. Not as flexible as some, but hey, it's still a foam rubber brush and that is still better than any of the fiber brushes. So for you guys, because I love you guys so much, I finally got off my lazy butt, found where my Copics are, so I will be able to use a Copic blender and a Blick Studio blender in our colorless blender test. I don't know where my Prismacolor one is. I'm sure that will come running along. But something I wanna point out is there no, there is no, everything rolls. Uh, there is no colorless blender in either of these sets, which I think is kind of weird, frankly. Um, I appreciate that they didn't wanna waste space when you're collecting multiple sets with a colorless blender but I'm just so used to that. The chisel on the 12 
pack is pretty standard. It can really only give you two, maybe three line weights. The brush is fine. It's a little bit grippy. It's kind of stubby and it's not too flexy. I would say it's pretty similar to the Milo Pro markers I reviewed not super long ago. And the inks in these bleed so much. Very similar to the Ohuhu and the Milo Pro markers. The color selection in the pastel set is decent. There's a skin tone in there and lots of pastels. It reminds me of the sketch marker pastels and I really like those. So that is the 12 pastel colors. I think they're very pretty and I think they're well suited to one another. So in my opinion, if you were gonna start with a set and you really wanted to be able to blend easily, these might be the way to go. Now, this might be a little unfair to say because I have reviewed some truly cheap markers, but these feel kind of cheap in the hand. I don't know what it is exactly other than the plastic itself and just how it clicks together. It just feels a little bit cheap, but so far there isn't anything that's like stand out egregious to them. Now, I don't really like the triangular marker bodies. I don't find them to be more ergonomic for me. They hurt my hand, but if you like them, let me know in the comments. But one thing I do like is they don't roll off the desk and Copic Chows and Prismacolors definitely roll off the desk. So while I don't really like the triangular body in terms of ergonomics, I do like the triangular body in terms of, hey, it's not gonna roll off the table. So here are the 12 colors in the pastel tones set. I've got them labeled and so far, kind of surprisingly, the caps are fairly reflective of what's actually inside. It's not a perfect match, but it's a lot better than I've seen with some brands. So I got to hand it to whoever made these for Arteza. So far, pretty good. Something else I noticed about the caps that I didn't point out is that they do have a little bit of a flange to help with removal. I do still think switching over the caps to a matte plastic or the bodies to a matte plastic, you need two different materials for these. That would make it a lot easier to use. I know I'm having a lot of hiccups here today. I, pre I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It's been a while since I've gotten to do an alcohol marker review. It's been a while since there were any that really interested, in, interested me. So I'm just kind of getting used to this again. So next we are going to do the 36 color set and it's a little bit too big to have on camera. So I'm not. Next up is the 36 color flora set and it doesn't really strike me as a color selection that I would term as flora and I'm somebody who paints a lot of flowers and foliage. I really like the color range though and a lot of the colors I typically go for are in this set including some good skin tones. I'm not really sure why though there are warm grays in a flora set. Warm grays are really useful. They can really extend what you can do with your markers, but I would not necessarily put them in a set termed flora, which implies florals. I don't really have a lot to add just from swatching. That's why we've got a couple more tests coming up, but I do, I can't talk about the color selection. So with the pastel tone set, I think the color selection is decent. There's a skin tone in there and there's lots of pastels and it reminds me of the sketch marker pastels and I really like those. So for the flora set, it doesn't really strike me as like a flora color range. And I say this as somebody who paints a lot of florals, but I do like this color range. There's a lot of colors I typically go for and some good skin tones, including darker skin tones, which if you guys have watched my alcohol marker reviews, you know that's really important to me as somebody who regularly renders people. I'm not really sure why the warm grays are in a flora set though. That's kind of the 
the area I'm a little confused about. So next, I want to test out how well these react to other solvents. That gives me an idea of how well they would play with other alcohol markers, because I don't know about you guys, but I am not tied to one brand. My marker collection is pretty much whatever I like that seems to work well and plays well together. So for that, we're gonna flip the page. We're going to pick a pretty dark color, something that seems like it would be reactive. And I have my Copic Colorless Blender, my Blick Studio Colorless Blender. I don't know where my Prismacolor Colorless Blender went, but eventually I'll find it. And I also have some 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol because this can also be used as a solvent with alcohol markers. And I have a lot of tutorials where I show you guys some really fun techniques using alcohol marker for fun effects with Sorry, using isopropyl alcohol for fun effects with alcohol markers. So since neither set came with a colorless blender, I'm going to use my own. I'm making three swatches. I've got a Blick Studio marker, a Copic marker, and some rubbing alcohol because alcohol markers are generally reactive to 99% isopropyl alcohol, and it's something that I use pretty frequently in my alcohol marker tutorial and all swatches were reactive to their representative colorless blenders. So the Arteza Everblend brush markers seem to be pretty reactive to all three solvents. Something I thought was kind of strange and I've pointed this out before is out of 48 markers, I still don't have a colorless blender with this set. So I don't know, but it's good that it reacts well with the Blick Studio and with the Copic. So if you guys would like to see me test out the Everblend markers with the Prismacolor, Okuhu, those kind of colorless blenders, let me know down in the comments below and keep an eye on my YouTube shorts because if you guys want to see that, I will dig around and try to find oh, my hoard of other alcohol markers so I can do some further reactivity tests and that'll let you guys know if Ohuhu plays nice with Arteza, plays nice with Artify. I want to check and see how well these markers blend into each other. So I'm creating a bit of a rainbow robe. We're going to start with the pastel colors. And depending on how well those do, we might try the same thing with the 36 color set. But uh, if it doesn't do so well, I certainly don't want to spend all that time with a 36 color set. So one of the things I like with the pastels is you actually get a really cohesive rainbow. These colors look like they should blend really well into one another without the need for a colorless blend. Blender. The colors I'm using in order are Y39, Y15, YR37, YR19, R36, RP09, PB09, PB16, B17, BG19, G17, and G08. And I found that these blend really well. They do get a little fumy, but not too bad. And I'm noticing some of the patchiness in the blends. So be careful not to overblend too much. So these blend pretty well. They do get a little fumy, but not too bad. I would again recommend working in a well ventilated area. I am noticing some patchiness in the blend, so be careful not to over blend too much. So that was pretty promising. Let's try doing it with all 36 colors in the Flora Tones set. So I'm not going to reorganize the Flora Tones into something more cohesive like this. I am just gonna blend through with what they've got. I didn't bother to reorganize these colors into a more cogent rainbow road. I'm just kind of working with what they gave me. And this is a good test for blendability because there are some color gaps in between the colors. And I noticed that there's a number of very similar tones that could have been replaced with additional yellows or blues or purples to extend the gamut, color gamut. So I think getting rid of some of the duplicates or very similar colors or leaning into that and getting rid of the warm grays and really going with, hey, this is a floral color palette would have been a good direction to go in. I don't think Arteza is going to like revamp their selections, but they might keep it in mind if they release larger or smaller sets in the future.
while doing Rainbow Road, I noticed a lot of very similar colors, which kind of bugs me when you're only dealing with 36 and where that could have been used for other colors. So these are our flora tones. We've got two very similar greens there. We've got two very similar greens there. We've got two very similar browns there. That's three colors. Oh yeah, that's three colors that could have been replaced with something that would have kind of extended the gamut a little bit. They do blend pretty well. If I were going for like a perfect rainbow road, I would have, you know, kind of adjusted them some because you know, there's some gaps in color or some areas where I could have blended it a little bit easier if I just moved the colors around. I'm not actually complaining about that, but I am kind of frustrated that we have a number of kind of similar colors taking up room when we really could have used more blues. We could have maybe used some more yellows. We could have used a colorless blender even. So I have one more test I want to do and that is the blending ball. We don't have a colorless blender like I said. So I'm going to use my Blick Studio colorless blender for this test. So for our blending ball, I selected five tones from our floral tone set. We've got Y07, Y02, Y36, YR04, and R03. And the goal is to render a somewhat passable sphere just to make sure that the colors layer, they blend, we can get the blender to kind of give us some highlights and just kind of give us an idea for how these are going to handle when we're doing the field test. With markers that are very prone to bleeding, this is when that starts to become super noticeable. So finally, we're gonna do the blending ball and I'm doing a fairly larger blending ball and I am aware that you can see the bleed through from the previous page. I just didn't wanna waste a lot of paper and I didn't think it'd be really relevant. So I am noticed that these run very dry for new markers. You guys can see how patchy those are and I'm trying to really fill it in so it's not overly patchy. And they are very dry for both ends of the marker, which is kind of frustration. frustrating. I mean, come on Arteza. This is why refills and replacement brushes are important. You're going to wreck that foam brush fast with how dry these markers run. And these are sure something. Maybe it's the colors I chose. These sure are something. Maybe it's the colors I chose. It just, and maybe when it finishes drying, it'll be better, but I just, <laughs> it's not my best blending ball, I'll give you that. And, and generally with yellows, they're a little bit of a weird color until they're dried. So one thing you wanna pay attention to is this is a thicker paper. We're working on mixed media paper, right? It is pretty prone to bleeding. In fact, this, is all the bleeding from the Rainbow Road. I just didn't want to waste a lot of extra paper and I thought I could get away with doing our blending ball on top of it. I found that these run really dry for brand new markers. And I mean both ends, both the brush and the chisel just have ink flow problems. It's like they underfilled it. So come on Arteza. This is why refills and replacement brushes are really important because you're gonna wreck that foam rubber brush fast as dry as these are. And this isn't even a particularly large illustration. It is a thirstier paper, but some artists like me prefer to work on thirstier papers because you can get those softer blends and you can do a lot more layering. So that's why I test my alcohol markers, not on like the super slick Copic paper, but on what I would be using for illustrations. Also, this kind of mixed media paper is really common for people's mixed media sketchbooks. So it's very likely that somebody would be using alcohol markers in a book like this one. I wasn't that impressed. There's a lot of weird patchiness. There's a lot of grayness going on. And I'm ignoring like the colors that bleed, bled through from the prior page. That's not really bothering me. But I'm seeing a lot of speckling, a lot of patchiness. I don't know. These have me a little bit nervous. All right, y'all, it is time to talk pros and cons for the Arteza brush tipped Everblend markers. So we're gonna start with the cons. 
that weird floating price point where different sets cost vastly different amounts of money. And I don't mean a difference between 12 and 36. I literally mean a difference between the floral tones and a, the tropical tones. There could be a massive price difference. They really need to standardize that. It would also be nice if they kind of standardize the prices between their website and their Amazon site, especially because honestly y'all they fulfill through Amazon anyway like when I order through the Arteza site it comes in an Amazon box so I don't understand why they have different price points there it's one thing if you want to offer like sales on your site specifically or incentives to get people to come to your site but your site shouldn't be drastically more expensive than the Amazon listing unless you don't want people shopping from your site which I just, I can't fathom that. That floating price point though is just so weird. It makes it really difficult to recommend these because the set you might want to get might be twice as much as the set I reviewed for no reason whatsoever. The, there's no refills or replacement brush nibs. And it does say that like replaceable nibs and on the site they say that you can refill them, but they don't actually offer the nibs or the refills. So it's kind of like a huge question mark for me. These seem kind of underfilled. They were definitely kind of dry both ends and they were kind of fumey. So if you're sensitive to smells, these are not gonna be a good fit for you. And this smooth body finish and triangular body is just really hard for me to grip. I do have arthritis, so you may not have these issues, but if you have grip issues, these are a harder one to, to grip. But then again, a lot of these Amazon less expensive white label alcohol markers do have that issue. So it's really kind of a matter of what's better, what's worse. I think this was easier for me to grip than the Ohuhu brush markers that I reviewed or any of those like round smooth body ones. These were a little bit easier on the hand than those, but this larger marker body causes my hand fatigue as I'm coloring larger areas. So if you love alcohol markers and you're prone to hand fatigue, Honestly, I would say the Copic Chows are a good size for that. That works well for me. And uh, that's about it for the cons. These are, these are, these are a tough nut for me. So I, what about the pros? I really do like the packaging on the 36 pack. I like that it's intended to be reusable. I like that a lot of thought went into the design, but I could not get the easel to work. So that kind of puts it in a con there. Tried reading the directions. Uh, I don't know, maybe we're just having a bad night. But I do like that the removable insert is designed to hold the markers securely, even horizontally. And I'm just gonna repeat myself a little bit here again. I really recommend, especially for longer term storage, that you store your alcohol markers horizontally. Doesn't always look as nice, sometimes harder to deal with, but this is really the better iteration for longevity with your alcohol markers. And I did like the foam rubber brush tip. It's less prone to fraying than a fiber nib. But these are so similar to the Ohuhu's in terms of how they handle and how the ink handles on the page that I'm kind of at a loss here because they're not particularly standout. They're not particularly great. I really like the sketch markers better than these. I really like the Ohuhu's better than these because they were a lot cheaper. Although I think those had no wait, maybe they replaced the nibs on those. Anyway, I, the fo that floating price point is just so weird for me. So what's my verdict on the Arteza Everblend brush tip markers? I feel like these are on par with the Ohuhu brush markers for me. Not terrible, not wonderful, and that fluctuating floating price point is so weird. It's difficult to know if I like these because they're decent and a good value, or I hate them because they're grossly overpriced for how they perform. I think the addition of replaceable brush nibs and refill inks would add a lot of value here for me, partially because Ohuhu and some of those other companies don't actually offer the refill inks or the replaceable brushes. So that wouldn't put these in a different category that would make them much more comparable to the Blick and to the Copic markers than it would to a marker you use and throw away. But as of right now, they don't have those on the site. And without those, it's harder for me to like them and be able to recommend them because I wanna recommend art supplies that you guys are gonna go for time and time again. 
So I guess this is one for the field test, but I think Arteza has a lot of issues to work out with this product. Figure out and standardize your price point, offer refills and replacements, and I'll feel a lot better about this product. There's too much up in the air for me to really recommend these now. I think they have potential, but I'd like to see Arteza step up and fix these issues. So look what came in literally the day after I finished recording this review. Isn't that how that works? So these are the fine nib, the bullet nib Arteza Everblend markers. And now we can actually kind of compare them. So this is the package for the brush chip. It says brush nibs, it says brush nibs, but other than that, it doesn't really seem to be different at all. So one thing I'd like to point out to Arteza first off is to change the packaging a little bit using maybe some color coding. So one could be black and red, the other could be red and black. That would just make it a little bit more noticeable at a distance, especially for someone who doesn't know what they're looking for exactly. It would make it easier for somebody who wants to buy one or the other to be able to purchase that. So. I purchased this during the Cyber Monday sale. They, I wasn't going to initially do talk about the chisel nibs at all, or the bullet nibs at all, but they were significantly discounted, so I figured it was worth taking a look at them. So they have a white marker body, like we kind of figured, whereas the brush chips have the gray marker body. The end that was the brush on the brush tip is the bullet tip and as we learned earlier the only replacement nibs they seem to sell are the chisel nibs and it's just basically the same chisel nibs so other than that there really aren't any differences between the marker bodies themselves we still have the color family number we still have the color name we still have the color name we still have the color family number pretty much everything else looks the same so all that really leaves for me to do is to go ahead and swatch these colors for you and then check back in later when we're doing the field test. All right, so their bullet tip markers, their classic Everblend markers are just kind of eh for me. They're not bad, they're fine. Uh, most bullet tip markers are pretty similar. They're a little smelly, but I have a migraine today, so I'm probably more sensitive to the smell. I like the color selection in the classic tones, but that is in addition to the other two sets I have, the 36 flora tones and the 12 pastel tones. And I don't necessarily recommend this set as a standalone set, but I do think the pastels might be a bit more serviceable. So if I were to recommend one set over the other, you guys know me, I prefer brush markers. I think they're easier to color. They're easier on my arthritis. They're easier to blend and I just enjoy them more. So I would actually recommend you get the brush tips over the bullet tips just out of personal preference. But if you like coloring smaller areas, like coloring for relaxation, really tiny details, I do think the bullet tips have a place. They're able to get really in there and give you much finer lines than you might get otherwise. I also kind of wonder if Arteza or the company that manufactures these for Arteza didn't just slap a brush nib on just these bullet nib markers and call it a day because the ink flow in these brush tip markers cannot keep up with the coloring and that seems to be a pretty common problem maybe they didn't fill them enough or something so in the end I would recommend you get the brush tips over the bullet tip markers so the bullet nib on these bullet nib markers is able to draw some really fine lines, which could be really good if you enjoy coloring for relaxation. It's got the same chisel nib on it. These are fine. Most bullet tip markers are pretty similar. They're a little smelly, but I also have a migraine today when I'm recording this, so I'm probably more sensitive to that smell. I like the color selection in the classic tones, but that's in addition to the two other sets I have, and I wouldn't recommend this set as a standalone set, but but I do think that the pastel set is serviceable as a standalone marker set. So these Arteza Everblend brush tip markers were purchased out of pocket with funds from my Patreon. I want to I want to extend a huge thank you to my amazing patrons for their help and support over the years. These sort of reviews would absolutely not be possible without them because I use the funds from Patreon to buy these kind of products and then be able to share my reviews with the wider world. So a big, big, big 
Thank you for all your support and all that you do. If you're interested in helping support reviews like this one, if you kind of believe in my mission statement, you can join me over at patreon.com slash natosoup for just a dollar or two a month. You get access to the art nerd community, including a discord server. And I'm constantly trying to share things like line arts and other kind of just backer exclusive goodies here and there just as a way to say thank you for all that you guys have done to help make this channel possible. If you enjoyed this review, if you found it helpful, useful, and informative, it would be a big, huge help if you shared it with somebody you think is interested in art, in illustration, or is curious about alcohol markers, particularly these Arteza Everblend markers. Your positive word of mouth, you telling other people about my channel is the only way this channel can grow, and I really do appreciate it when you help spread the word. So thank you guys so much for having my back and standing in my corner. If you enjoy art supply reviews and tutorials, I hope you guys will consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification so YouTube lets you know when I update. If you're missing my art updates, if YouTube doesn't let you know, you can always just follow follow for free my Patreon page because once a week I do a backer update where I share everything that went live that week. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me today. I'm sorry I don't have a more definitive answer for you guys, but I think Arteza has a lot of work to do to kind of spruce these up. And I look forward to seeing you guys again when we do the field test. So have a wonderful day, guys. Bye!